Hey, this is Pablo. In this video, I want to take a deep dive uh, into the uh, filter a node, which uh, used to be called RBE, which stands for Report by Exception. Uh, so here we are in Present Designer. As you know, the uh, premier edge data and data operations and industriality platform, which is 100% compatible with Node Red. Uh, and here we have the filter node. Let's look at its options. Uh, and for, for now, let's concentrate on the um, default options. Um, this node has several modes, and the default is to block and less value changes. And you say, OK, block what? Well, it will, um, what value? What is this blocking? OK, so it, it will look at a certain message property, which you specify here. In this case, the default is payload. It will look at the value in that property and it will filter out or drop or not uh, pass the message to the output if the message or payload value is the same as what it has uh, seen in the previous message. And we'll deal about this uh, topic um, uh, issue later. So for now, let's just focus on that. So uh, an example will illustrate this. So um, here we have the filter node. Uh, we have a debug node to just look at its output. And the input is the uh, prompt input node, which is a node that person has contributed to the community. Uh, whatever I type in is going to be converted into a number and placed in the payload. So uh, let's say I um, the payload is going to be 500 because it's the first um, number that it has seen will pass through to the output. And if I type 500 again, it will be ignored. Anything different than 500 will pass. All right, so that's easy enough to understand. And uh, a sub option of this uh, default is um, the same as before, except that uh, it will ignore the initial value. And that sometimes is useful uh, when you're um, monitoring the, the status of a node um, just to ignore the, the initial state, essentially. All right, so hopefully that's uh, easy enough to understand. Now let's look at this um, topic uh, option. Uh, this is similar to other um, stock nodes in Designer or Node Red where you can specify a, a channel, if you will, a unique property that separates the values that you're operating on uh, so that they can act independently of each other. And, and perhaps a, a, a concrete example will help. Say you have multiple sensors in a system and you want to apply this functionality of blocking and less value changes. Of course, you want to apply that to each sensor independently. So how do you do that? Well, in in this case, in message to a topic as default, but you can say message to do sensor ID or whatever. Um, but in this case, in the topic, you would place a unique identifier of each sensor so that the functionality of uh, this node will apply only. So essentially, it, it, it saves, the node will save the state of each sensor independent of each other and apply its functionality just according to whatever sensor the payload corresponds to. So, uh, so that's what this option allows you to do. And um, to exemplify this, I have this a little um, global context memory, which um, switches the topic between A and B. And you can see here, and I can toggle it A, B, A, B. Uh, and then I add that um, global context variable to the topic. So the message that goes into the filter node, it's a payload and a topic. And uh, this functionality of filtering by uh, uh, by topic or, or using the topic to, to apply uh, the blocking independently works a little bit different depending on the type of payload received. Uh, so I have two prompt input nodes here. One is going to convert whatever I uh, type into the uh, input box into an object and put in the payload. And the other one is going to... Uh, convert whatever my input is into a number and put in the payload. Incidentally, you can reset the state, meaning uh, 
get it back to uh, not having um, uh, a safe state if you send a message we had a boolean true in uh, message.reset so uh, let's just clear the, the the memory of the filter node it's reset resetting a just for uh, safety rest reset b all right so let's just start with uh, a number uh, the topic that will filter in is a so let's just say that a is 100 it passes through. Obviously, if I type 100 again, it does not. But now let's just switch to topic B. Uh, because we reset the, the state, it doesn't have any memory of B. So whatever I type in should pass and B. Okay. And if I type one again, it doesn't. Now let's just switch to A again. And what A had, the state of A is 100. So if I type in 100, it will block, but if I type, say, one, which is the value of B, but we're not filtering by A, we're filtering by A, it will pass, right? Now, if I switch to B, and if I type one again, which is the value of B, it, it won't, right? So it's filtering by, um, by topic, and it's, sa it's saving the state of each topic independently and applying its functionality just based on whatever the message dot topic is is telling the values from. Uh, you can do uh, a similar issue thing with um, an object payload, but here uh, you have to be careful because the functionality is a little bit different. Uh, so let's just reset it. Uh, and um, let's just type in an object. Uh, let's say A is five and B is 10, right? And we'll filter in by A. So because I just reset it, uh, it the, the object will, will pass through as uh, before. And if I type in the same object, it will stop, right? It will be filtered. And if now I change A to say 100, now it should pass and it does. Now the tricky thing here is that perhaps counterintuitively, the state save is the whole object. Even though we're filtering by A, the state is the whole object. So for example, if I, uh, A was 100, right? So if I type, type A to 100, but I, now I change B to, I don't know, uh, five, you say, okay, A is the same. So maybe you intuitively, you think it, it doesn't matter what B is because we're filtering by A, but because the payload is an object, and because this filter saves the state um, of uh, the topic A as uh, the whole object it received, this will go through. So just a little bit, maybe, or perhaps to me, it's a little bit counterintuitively, but that's that's how the uh, node works. So if I uh, we type this again, uh, with the A to 100 and B5, um, now it it passes because the object is is different. So uh, perhaps not super uh, intuitive, but uh, that's how the node works. Now the node has also uh, a couple of other options which are uh, interesting. So you have this um, well, it's called dead band, or uh, in electric engineer it will be similar to a stop band. So it will block values that are. Uh, outside of uh, a certain uh, range. Uh, sorry, it, it will block values that are um, within a certain range. So the, the it only pass values that are outside a, say in this case, let's just say that is uh, greater or equal to two, for example. So in this case, the uh, values that are within a plus minus two uh, range of the previous value um, won't um, won't pass through the output. And you can also uh, use percentage instead of absolute uh, values. Um, so let's just do an example here. Uh, so let's say we have 100. Uh, and then if I say 101, that gets blocked. 100 and 1.9 gets blocked, 
or if I say 105, that passes through. So um, the name dead band or star band um, comes from the fact that you're defining a, a band either in absolute or in relative terms uh, around a certain value and you're only accepting values uh, to pass if they're outside that band. Uh, and the other option is uh, other group of options. And, and by the way, you can say if it's greater than or greater than or equal to. So if it includes the the edge of the band or not. And the last couple of options are for the narrow band option, which is the essentially the opposite of of the dead band or uh, the star band. Uh, in this case, uh, an electrical engineer will be similar to a, a pass band filter, where you are only passing values that are that are within a certain uh, band around uh, the previous input value again in, in either relative or in um, absolute terms. So in this case, uh, sorry, just in this case, um, it will block it will block so it will not pass any values that are outside of a plus minus two band uh, with respect to the the um, previous value. Uh, in this case, I am also, I'm gonna uh, use the um, the topic filtering. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, the prompt input input is um, configured to uh, give me an options uh, an object. So, let's just say I've, uh, I'm filtering by a. Uh, this five is five. Um, no number in the payload. So uh, in the case of uh, the narrow band, let's just do an example. Um, let's just say that I'm filtering by A and let's just do 100. So now 100 is my the center of my band. And if I go up above or below that band by more than two, it will block it. So if I do 90, it's blocked. But if I do 99, it should pass. And now 99 is the center of my of my band. So if I go too above that, it will, uh, or below, it will block it. So if I do 102, it will block it. But if I do 100, it will pass. So this is the, uh, these are all the options and uh, the functionality of the filter node is uh, very useful in a, in a variety of circumstances. Um, the uh, top band and pass bands or dead band and narrow band, however you want to call it, are, are useful for um, to capture drift. Uh, of course, the the drift is simple um, because it only takes uh, into consideration the just the previous value. Um, if you want to do more uh, refined filtering as, as an average or moving average or anything like that, um, then it's this functionality that this does not will, will not cover. But for for simple scenarios, um, or state changes, it's it's pretty darn useful. All right, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any suggestions for, suggestions for other notes uh, that uh, I should cover, just let me know in the comments below. Till next time.